Hi, everybody, and welcome to our first lecture. So for this unit, what I have is um, some information mainly on graphing. So a review to start on how to just graph points, but then we'll review how to graph some linear equations, how to graph some more complicated equations like a quadratic. Um, we're going to look a little bit at circles as well and the midpoint and distance formula. So this particular lecture focuses just on section 1.1 in your text. Um, and you'll see that for most weeks, we'll cover more than one section in the text. For unit one, you guys are just getting started in the course. So we're just gonna cover one section here. Um, but as we get into further weeks, you will notice that we'll cover two or even three sections for many of the units. So we do move pretty quickly. Uh, my goal of this pre-recorded lecture that I'm doing for you guys, um, is to give you a general overview of what's covered in that week's unit uh, or in that unit. Um, so for instance, my goal is not really to do every single problem in the text in these lectures. I'm not going to have time to do every example, but my goal is to give you an overview. So at least touch on one example of each style um, or each topic, for instance. And then I do still highly recommend that you do the rest of your assignments as well, of course, right? So um, obviously your homework and, and quizzes and discussions, but also doing things like reading through the text and using your text resources as well. Um, so text resources could include things like obviously reading the textbook, um, watching additional videos there as well, or using some of their animations, PowerPoints, et cetera. Uh, but hopefully these lectures will give you that kind of introduction to get going, and then you can decide where you need to spend more time. So maybe you want to watch more videos on a certain topic, um, or maybe you feel pretty comfortable, or maybe you want to watch all the videos that the text provides. So that part will be up to you. So let's get started. Um, in this first lecture here, we're gonna just focus again to start on graphing. And the first page I think will be a review for you. Um, with these recorded lectures too, don't forget you can pause the video at any point. Um, you obviously can uh, skip around as well and rewatch. Um, so if the first page is something that you're really familiar with, you could always skip ahead. Or if you find that there's a topic that you need to rewatch, then feel free to pause the video. Um, I also recommend um, you know, trying some of it on your own too. So if you feel that this first page is going to be review, we're going to just practice plotting points here. Pause the video, try it on your own, and then check your answers with me. And then that way you'll know if you really do understand the topic or if you should maybe watch that part of the lecture. All right, so here are the notes that I have that go with the lecture. Um, some of the questions I take are from your text or some, a lot of them as well are ones that I just make up. If you can print the lecture, then great. And if you can't, that's okay too. You can just take notes at home um, and these will be available online for you to reference instead. So graphs obviously are very meaningful. Um, it's a way for us to display and analyze data. Often when we're dealing with the real world and we have data, the first thing that we will do is we organize it. We often put it into some sort of table or maybe an Excel spreadsheet. Um, and then we usually graph it if we can. Um, and that helps us to visually see what's happening and it lets us look for patterns as well. Uh, most people are very, uh, or maybe not very, but are at least visual in some capacity, right? Um, so if you can see the data, then obviously that really helps um, for, for visualizing those patterns. Um, so not for everybody, but in most cases, that is a helpful um, thing to look at um, for, for pattern seeking. So to start, I just want to review the different parts of the coordinate plane. Um, so this here is our grid, and it has many different names. So it's sometimes called the Cartesian plane or the coordinate plane. You may also hear it as the rectangular plane. Um, or we'll say sometimes the rectangular coordinate system. The word system is used a lot there as well. Uh, but it has some key features. So. First, you do have a horizontal and a vertical axis. So you are in two dimensions here with, with graphing. If you use X and Y for your variables, your X axis is the one that runs horizontally. And then your Y axis is the one that runs vertically. So we usually label those as X and Y. But you could use any variable you really want to, as long as they're labeled. X and Y just tend to be the most popular ones. 
On the x-axis, your positive numbers will be on the right and your negative numbers are on the left. In this example, we're counting by units of one. Um, so this would be positive one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is nine. Um, 10 is actually over here. So the, it's a little off on the picture. And then on the left side, we're going negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, and so on. And again, it's maybe copied it a little bit funny, but negative 10, a little bit further over there. Going up, you have your positives. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And again, 10 would be at the very top. And then going down, you have your negatives. Um, just watch out for this first line. It's right here, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, and so on. Now, you don't have to always just count by ones. So you will see examples of graphs where we count maybe by twos or fives or tens or hundredths, et cetera. Um, but the thing that's important to know is that you have to be consistent. Um, so if we're kind of count by ones, we count by ones the entire axis. Um, if you count by fives, you do it the entire axis. You can mix your units. So, you know, your X axis could be by ones and your Y axis could be by fives. That's perfectly fine as well, as long as it's consistent for that axis. You'll notice that the two axes break up our graph into one, two, three, four pieces, and these are called quadrants. So this is your first quadrant. This is your second quadrant. Moving down here, you have your third quadrant and your fourth quadrant. We do typically label the quadrants as we're using Roman numerals, um, so that is maybe a little bit different notation. Um, and they do go counterclockwise around. Now, the important thing there is more just so we can talk about different parts of the graphs. It's a little bit easier for me to say to you, hey, look at the second quadrant um, and just let you know where you should be focusing. Um, in some examples as well, sometimes a lot of times with real world problems, if all of our values are positive, we may also focus on the first quadrant or even just draw the graph in the first quadrant only. That's common as well. You'll notice that the two axes do meet at this cross or intersection here. This intersection is called the origin, um, and it's a point zero, zero. So all of our points or ordered pairs are of the form x comma y, um, or whatever the horizontal axis is comma the vertical axis. So it's always in that particular order. Um, and each of these ordered pairs uh, creates one single point on the graph. So the particular order pair zero, zero is right at that center there. Now, when you're graphing, um, again, this first part here does have different names. You can call it the first coordinate, the X coordinate, or formerly the abscissa. Um, the Y part is called the second coordinate the y coordinate or the ordinate. Um, for me, I tend to just call it the x and y values or the x and y coordinates um, to keep it a little bit simpler there, but all those terms are interchangeable. So let's just practice graphing a few points before we move on. So my first point here is negative three comma two. Um, so remember it is ordered. So it's important the order that you're reading it. Again, Whatever is on your horizontal axis comes first, and then your vertical axis comes second. So here we're using x's and y's. So that means the first value is x, and the second value would have to be the y. Now, each of these pairs creates just one single point. Um, so what you do is you find, first of all, the negative 3 on the x-axis, which is right here. And you find the 2 on the y-axis, which is right here. And then basically, you draw your point where those two uh, values meet. So if I put a point right here, you'll notice that it matches with negative three on the x-axis and it matches with two on the y-axis. So that is my point. Let me do another one. So here our x value is six and our y value is four. So I'm going to find six on the x-axis, which is right here. I find four on the y-axis. And then I'm going to just match those up and put a point right there where they intersect.
Our next one is eight, negative nine. So again, our X value is eight. Now our Y value is negative nine, which is gonna be way down here. Another way you can do it is to count, right? So I know I'm going, I'm counting by ones here. So I'm going nine units down. So I go to my eight and I count down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And again, you can make sure it lines up. This would be negative eight. This would be negative nine. So that point is right at that intersection. And this is the point eight, negative nine. Now, next I have the point zero five. So sometimes we do have zeros in our points. And when you have a zero, it means that that point actually lies on an axis. Um, so in this case, our X value is zero. So what happens is zero is right at the center. So I'm not gonna move to the positives. I don't move to the negatives. I say right at that center for X. And then I count up to five for Y. It's positive, so I'm going up five units here. And my point will say right on that axis. Here I have um, negative one, so that's my X, Oops, my X, and then zero is my Y. So here I find my X value is negative one, which is right here. And then if your Y value is zero, you don't move up and you don't move down. You just stay on the axis. So that point is gonna be right here. And then finally, my last point is negative seven and negative two. So I find my negative seven on the X axis. Negative two is down. So I'm gonna count down two units. And again, you'll see that it matches in directions. So that's just a quick review on how we can plot points, um, which is one of the key things for graphing. Now, one last thing I wanna talk about here before we move on is how we describe point location. So for instance, the point six, four would lie in the first qu uh, quadrant, right? Cause it's in the first quadrant here. Negative three, two is in the second quadrant. Negative seven, negative two is in that third quadrant. And then our fourth quadrant is positive eight, negative nine. Um, so you may notice some patterns here that you can make notes of. You know, the first quadrant, both X and Y values are positive. Whereas in the second quadrant, the Y value is positive, but the X values are always gonna be negative. In our third quadrant, both X's and Y's are always negative. If you look at the axes, you're in all negatives here. And then in our fourth quadrant, your X values are positive, but your Y values will be negative. Now, points like negative one, zero and zero, five are not in quadrants. We say that they're on the axes. So the point zero, five lies on the Y axis. The point negative one, zero lies on the X axis. And then the origin zero, zero lies on both axes. It is both on the X axis and also on Y axis.